Welcome to the System Performance Measures Data Collection video series. If you're watching this video, it's because you want to end homelessness. To end homelessness, you need good data about the people you serve. Without that good data, it's harder to make an impact at your agency and on the people you see and help on a daily basis. Each video in this series will focus on a single performance measure and will offer one to three areas of focus for data collection. Before we get started, there are a few reports you need to run and have handy. First, you will need to run the HUD data quality report. Save it as a PDF to review later, then run the report as an export. Essentially, the export will spit out the APR ESG and DQ detail export. Don't worry if you don't have these funding types. The report will still be useful to you. You will also need to run the 2018 System Performance Measure 1 report and the 2018 System Performance Measures 2 through 7 report. Save each of these reports as PDFs and then export them to Excel data as well. While you will mostly be working out of the Excel data files, having the PDF files on record is good for establishing at a glance where your data is currently at. You may also find it useful to run the System Performance Measure 1 report two to four times using the different report criteria settings. For dates, use October 1st, 2017 as the start date. Leave today's date as the end date. Note that as we progress through the years, the start date will change. Eventually, we'll be looking at October 1st, 2018, and then 2019, and then 2020, and so on. There are videos on our YouTube channel that cover each of these reports and how to export them. I encourage you to take a look at those videos if you are unfamiliar with the steps needed to run and export the necessary reports. Save all of these reports in an easy to access folder and you're ready to dive in. In this video, we're going to take a look at System Performance Measure 4, Employment and Income Growth in COC Funded Programs. This measure looks at COC funded safe haven, transitional housing, rapid rehousing, and permanent supportive housing projects. If your project isn't funded by the COC, move on to the next video. For this measure, we will need to look at the HUD UDQ report PDF and the APR ESG DQ detail export. Our areas of focus are going to be missing assessments, specifically missing annual assessments, and negative differences in income from entry to exit. This measure is broken up into six different parts. Measures 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3 are looking at clients who have been in HMIS for at least a year and are still in the system at the end of the reporting period. These are your stayers. Measures 4.4, 4.5, and 4.6 are looking at clients who exited the program during the reporting period. These are considered your leavers. First, take a look at your HUD UDQ report PDF, section Q4. This section will tell you if you have any missing income in entry, exit, or annual assessments. Sometimes errors in this section indicate the entire assessment is missing for the client. As you can see, I have a lot of outstanding issues with my assessments. So how can I track those clients down? In your APR ESG and DQ detail export, you will notice that along with the data validation file, there are other Excel files that correspond to each section of the UDQ. To see the clients listed as errors in Q4 of the UDQ, open up the Q4 Excel data file. The data in the file itself is extremely straightforward. You will see the missing data element in question, the client ID, and the client name. From here, it's just a matter of taking note of the client ID and doing some investigating in HMIS. In a majority of cases, you will find that the data is truly missing. For example, this client was listed as missing an annual assessment, and when I look at their assessments, I can see that there are in fact two annual assessments missing for this client because we only have an entry assessment for 2016. For missing annual assessments, go through the process of creating an annual assessment. Make sure that your annual assessment is dated correctly. It must be 30 days before or after the month and day of the client's enrollment date. So there's a 60 day window in which an annual assessment can be dated. Clients need an annual assessment for each year they are enrolled in the program. 
If your client is missing an entry assessment, you can create one by going through Edit Enrollment Workflow. If your client is missing an exit assessment, you can create one by going through Exit the Enrollment. But what if you see that the assessment is there, the data is entered correctly, but it's still counting as an error? At that point, you will want to check dates. Does the entry or exit assessment date match what's listed on the client's dashboard? What about the date on the individual assessments within the master assessment? Do those dates match the master assessment date? Is the annual assessment dated within the 60-day timeframe relative to the client's enrollment? If you see the assessment is there, the dates look to be correct, but the client is still peeing as an error, get in touch with the HMIS help desk. It may be that the assessment is not correctly attached to the enrollment on the back end of the system. For our next area of focus, let's look to see if there were any clients who entered your program with income, but were exited from the program without income. For this, we're going to look at the data validation file from the APR ESG data export. Now, in some instances, this is actually correct. Something happened during the enrollment period where the client lost their income at the time of exit. In other cases, it's just a matter of the data not being entered at the time of the exit. As always, set a filter along your top row. There are a lot of columns in the data validation file, so you may find it helpful to hide some of the columns you are not using by highlighting the columns, right-clicking, and then selecting Hide. Freeze the first column so that you're always going to see your client ID on the left-hand side. We're only interested in clients who have exited our program, so scroll to the Exit Date column. Filter so that you're only seeing clients who have been exited. Now you want to narrow it down to just clients who entered the program with income. And finally, take a look at clients who exited the program without any income. Do some digging on these types of clients. Did they actually leave the program with no income? Or was it that the data just wasn't entered? I actually have two clients that meet this criteria here, so I'll need to do some investigating for them. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Join us in our next video in the System Performance Measures Data Correction Series.